Hello everyone, welcome to this new video, new week with a new challenge in which we're going to tackle a new challenge called Gemini Pentest version 2. Let's get started. If you recall from my previous videos, we've solved the Gemini Pentest V1. I've just realized that I was pronouncing Gemini in the uh, previous challenge as Gemini. Or is it Gemini or Gemini? Um, well, today we're going to tackle the second version. Hopefully this will be as fun as the first one. So we're going to save and start the game as usual. Let's open up a new terminal and wait for the host name to be up. There it is. ctf03.rootme.org the first step that we need to do is discover what this machine has to offer. And to do that, you guessed it, we start with InMap to do what we call port scanning. Those of you who are new to this channel will learn that I like to start small and build upon what I find. So I'm just targeting the first 20 TCP ports and I'm targeting this uh, host name to see if there are any uh, services that might pop up right now. And so now we have a, a bunch of um, filtered ports. We don't want those to be shown. So I'm going to increase the uh, number of ports to 100 and just target the open ports with the dash dash open option. Let's give it some time and hopefully we will get back the open ports. Perfect, we have two ports, 80 and 22, just like what we've had with our previous challenge. Now, what I'd like to do is run a full scan on the background. So I'm going to uh, store all, all the results in, in a file called scan and I'm going to remove the top ports and replace it with dash b dash. This essentially means that we're going to perform the whole TCP range including non-standard ports. And while we are running this, I'm going to probe the HTTP service which is hosted on port tw tw uh, 80. So I'm going to open a new browser, ctf03.rootme.org. Okay. And we get back a web page as expected. Gemini Inc. version 2. Okay. This is an internal web application designed for employees, blah, blah, blah. And roles and access controls have been implemented for administrators to access the admin panel. Okay, this is new. V2 is generally more secure and has better functionalities compared to V1. Hmm, okay. So, uh, like the web interface we had in the previous uh, Gemini version 1 pen test challenge, we also have a login.php. So, if we try the same credentials as before, admin 1234 nope they don't work okay let's explore the application and see if there are any new features and so we have home in the navigation bar but we also have users list .php this uh, functionality has been um, excluded or should I say th the file was deleted in the first version but now it's present, okay. It returns a 403 meaning forbidden in the HTTP dragon. So maybe that's because we're not authenticated yet. I'm not sure, but let's keep digging. So we have the contact which points to a Twitter account and we have a path or a URL in the about us link that points to a WordPress website. I'm not sure if this is also part of the challenge. Let's see. 
script kid OSCP journey, some ads, and yeah, these are some walkthroughs. So I'm not sure if this is part of the plan. It's I guess it's what we call in penetration testing out of scope assets. So normally in a real penetration testing engagement, we would have a prior meeting called a kickoff meeting where we specify the scope. And so the scope would be this uh, web application or this host name, but anything else would be excluded. So we're not going to test this. Otherwise we're going to be black hats or gray hats, but we're white hat hackers, right? We're ethical. So um, what I want to do here is compare the files to the ones that we've had in the GitHub account from the previous challenge. Remember, Gemini uh, version one was inspired by a GitHub uh, account, or, or should I say GitHub um, web application, which was called master logging system. So if you recall, we had some interesting files like the install uh, mod privacy or maybe profile. Uh, let's do like what we've done before and uh, try to s fetch those pages, see if uh, anything returns some interesting data. So why don't we try with mod? And it says 404, meaning it doesn't exist. What about install? I'm doing this manually because these are just a few pages and we don't have to automate anything. Uh, what about profile? Hmm. It returns 403. That's interesting. So it might indicate that we need to be authenticated first. What about register? PHP. Nope. Um, user validate. Okay. Let's try with the user for our three. What about validate? Not found. Okay. Um, there was a mention of an admin panel, right? If you recall from the home page. So I wonder if there is an admin panel. Uh, maybe hidden under admin. Oh, okay. So we have a directory listing uh, vulnerability that has some a bunch of JavaScript and CSS files. Nothing interesting really here. Yeah, maybe we can read some CSS and see if there are any uh, URLs like here. As you can see, we have a new path called image underneath we have valid.php. Other than that, I don't really see anything that pops up. Okay, nothing, nothing really. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem that we have uh, an interesting attack surface here. We need to do more enumeration. Enumeration is key and you've probably heard that many, many times. But essentially, when you hit a roadblock, the reflex that you should develop is to go back to enumeration. So let's fire up WFuzz or whatever tool you like to work with for directory brute force. And yeah, so here we have scanned all the TCP ports and we only have those two services. So we are on the right track. Okay, I'm just going to CD into the uh, folder dedicated to this challenge and I am going to run wfuzz with the word list that is located under user share. Um, actually, I have downloaded a, a setlist project from Daniel Missler or Meisler. So that would be under hacking tools, setlists and discovery, web content, and I'm going to choose my favorite lists from Ralph uh, or Raft, sorry, um, Raft. Um, let's start with small files and we want to target our web application, 
me.org and we want to brute force this place. This is where we place the fuzz placeholder and we want to hide the codes that return 404, meaning it doesn't exist. Let's give it a try and see what we get. I've made an error. I guess the uh, hide code should be before the URL. Okay, let's give it a try once more. And it seems that it's working. Perfect. So we already have a bunch of files here. Some return um, 200, others return 403. So we have the index, profile, login, footer, header, um, user.php, registration. Okay, so we have a new file here which we didn't find in the um, GitHub account or GitHub project. We have another one called activate, which is also new. We have also export.php. We have a bunch of other files. We have something called blacklist.txt, which returns 200. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder what this blacklist.txt is. So let's fetch that blacklist.txt. Is it blacklists or blacklist? Oh, yeah. Okay, blacklist is an array that contains some commands, wget. Uh, yeah, this is commented out, but we have an array of characters and seemingly Linux commands, okay, less, more, cat. And if the test CMD parameter that's sent part of, as part of the post data falls under one of these, we return, or if it doesn't exist, then we have nothing. Seems that it's a broken code. And uh, yeah, not sure what, why this file is here but let's uh, save it for later. Maybe it would be handy. Okay, do we have any other results? Um, nothing interesting here apart from, oh, the header returns 500, okay. But it, the, uh, as you can see here, we have an empty response. Zero characters, zero words, and zero lines. So let's go maybe with the registration.php Fetch that page, and what do we have here? Oh, hey, register form, cool. I wonder if it's working, I hope so. So I'm going to name it um, subscribe. Honestly, just go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Most of uh, the viewers of this channel are not subscribed, so it really helps support the channel. So, yeah. Okay, we're going to use that as the password, why not? Oh, there was an error, please try again. Hmm, let's uh, retry. Please subscribe. And the password, please subscribe. Email already in use, oh, okay. So we have an email enumeration vulnerability here. We could try several emails and see if they are in use or not, and then try to brute force the login, if it's using the uh, email, of course. But I, I, I guess I suspect the error we get is because we are using a weak password. I'm not sure, but let's use a something that has a bunch of characters. Yeah, it's saying email already in use. Mm, let's try with uh, another email and then introduce some characters in our password. Username already in use. Okay, so we have also username enumeration uh, vulnerability. Let's add a zero one and then the password. Oh, okay. So I guess the prob problem that we've been having uh, was uh, regarding the password. It's just that the error message did not mention it. Uh, let's save that password. And it says here, your account is not yet activated. Please submit the six digit code for activation. So we already see that we 
somehow have access to the account, but can we change any settings? Nope. Can we access user list? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, so because we need to activate it, I guess that's the responsibility of this page, if I'm not mistaken. I hope not. So let's go to activate.php. Maybe we can specify the username. Yep, so we can specify, but here we need the user ID and the activation code, which is nothing but the six digit code. Cool. How do we get the user ID? Hmm. This is what we are going to see in the next video. Please subscribe to get notified and hit the ring bell to receive the video once it goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.